This film begins by showing three astronauts in a spaceship riding a rocket into outer space. At that time, they're being guided by a control center on Earth called Hyperion. Even though the rocket had a few problems at first, they fixed them, and everything went smoothly. Once they got to space, they linked up their spaceship with a booster rocket attached to the MTS space station. This helped them make gravity like we have on Earth. Meanwhile, the astronauts got ready for their two-year mission to Mars. After a bit, the three of them got together and talked to Hyperion to give a report. Marina Barnett, the leader, told Earth that they were all set and heading to Mars. Along with Marina, there were Zoe Levinson, who was the doctor, and David Keem, the biologist in charge of studying plants on Mars. Marina mentioned how lucky she was to have such experienced teammates with her. After giving their report to Hyperion, Zoe and David seemed ready to take a break, but Marina was still checking the life support equipment on board when she noticed drops of blood on the floor. Curious, Marina decided to look into the upper compartment and was surprised to find an injured and unconscious man there. Suddenly, the man fell on Marina, and the engine in the compartment seemed badly damaged. At that time, Zoe and David heard the noise and rushed to help Marina and the man, who they learned was named Michael Adams. Together with David, Zoe immediately started treating Michael, who was alive but seriously injured in his stomach. There, Zoe also treated Marina, who had a broken arm from being crushed by Michael. Zoe then said Marina would need about six weeks to fully recover. On the other hand, Marina, after getting treatment, quickly reported Michael to Hyperion. From what they found out, Michael was an officer involved in preparing the rocket launch, but they weren't sure how he ended up trapped in the plane. After Michael's incident, Marina had to temporarily shut off the life support system on the spaceship because of the damage. This meant the carbon dioxide levels in the spacecraft started going up since they couldn't use the oxygen support engine. So, Marina and the others had to fix the device quickly to keep their journey to Mars on track. Plus, there was only enough oxygen for three people, and with the extra person on board, they had to save the oxygen for emergencies. When Michael woke up, he realized he was in space and walked towards the window. Zoe saw him and brought him back to the media room, where David and others asked him how he ended up trapped in the spaceship. Michael said he fainted while getting ready for the space shuttle launch, but couldn't remember much. Zoe also realized Michael had a concussion, which made it hard for him to remember what happened. At that time, Michael asked Marina to take him back to Earth, because he was worried about his younger sister who lived alone there. But Marina explained they couldn't go back until their two-year mission was done. This made Michael sad and guilty for leaving his sister behind. Then. While they were having a meal together, Marina told Michael that Hyperion had arranged for someone to take care of his younger sister and cover all her expenses while he was in space. Upon hearing that, Michael was grateful for the news and offered to help out if they needed extra hands. Marina explained they hadn't received any more instructions on that, but asked Michael to get used to life on the spaceship. So Zoe started giving him some directions and David invited him to the plant research room, hoping he could assist with backing up research data. Meanwhile, Marina checked the damage to the life support machine equipment. With Zoe's help taking photos of the damage, Marina sent the pictures to Hyperion for analysis and repair instructions. Later, she asked David about how much oxygen his plants could produce. David said they only made 90 liters per day so Marina asked him to increase production to 950 liters per day. David admitted that he could easily increase oxygen production, but unfortunately, the tools needed were sent to Mars first using an unmanned aircraft. Marina added that the current oxygen reserves in the plane weren't enough for four people, so David needed to find a way to boost oxygen production from his plants. Meanwhile, Michael was seen helping Zoe remove the damaged engine module. Next, David opened his alga plant seeds, originally intended for breeding on Mars, to provide enough oxygen for all the crew before reaching Mars. After a few steps, David told Marina 
that his plants could make up to 500 liters of oxygen per day. Maria was thrilled to hear this and asked David to open more seas to fulfill their oxygen needs. But David said he still needed some seas for his research on Mars. He reminded Maria they didn't have to use all the seeds yet because they could still fix the damaged oxygen support machine. He also wasn't sure if all the seeds would grow successfully. After trying to grow several seeds, David's plants didn't grow well, just like he thought. He had to try new seeds, but they didn't work either. This made Marina frustrated, so she asked Hyperion for the best solution. Soon, Marina gathered David and Zoe to discuss photos of their damaged life support equipment, which Hyperion confirmed couldn't be fixed. Now, they didn't have enough oxygen, especially since they only had enough reserves for two people. Turns out, David's plants could only support one person, so Michael's presence was a danger. Then, Zoe suggested using the giant tank of liquid oxygen used for rocket launches to boost their reserves. But getting the liquid oxygen meant leaving the safety of the plane, and Marina didn't want to risk anyone's life. She thought the only option was to get rid of Michael, which Zoe disagreed with. At that time, Marina didn't want any conflicts, so she gave them 10 days to find another solution that didn't involve sacrificing Michael. Before they left, Marina asked her crew to keep their plan to erase Michael's existence a secret from him, even though the idea came from Hyperion. After the meeting, Marina told Hyperion she couldn't follow their orders because she didn't want to stress out her crew. Three days later, David told Marina he hadn't found a solution to the oxygen problem yet, he warned that delaying a decision could ruin their mission to Mars. Meanwhile, Zoe was treating Michael's wounds in the medical room. He shared that he took care of his younger sister after their father died in a fire. Hearing this, Zoe quietly cried in her room, worried about Michael's sister if they went through with their plan. While everyone was resting, David sneaked into Zoe's lab to get an injection before talking to Michael. He explained the low oxygen levels on the plane and said Michael shouldn't be there because it could endanger their mission to Mars. David admitted he tried to find a way for all four of them to survive, but since his plan to increase oxygen with the plants failed, he believed they couldn't make it. So he came to give Michael an injection for something drastic. After talking with David, Michael sat by the plane window, feeling like a burden. He cried and sent a final message to his sister before considering using the injection. But Zoe stopped him, saying she hadn't given up on finding a solution and asked him not to do anything rash. At that time, Michael returned the injection, trusting Zoe to find a way. Later, Zoe confronted David, saying he shouldn't have pressured Michael, especially since Marina gave them 10 days to solve the oxygen problem. There, David explained he was frustrated because he sacrificed his years of research to get more oxygen but ended up losing all his plant seeds for Mars. Zoe understood David's feelings and his efforts to help everyone. Zoe explained to Michael their idea of leaving the plane to collect liquid oxygen from the rocket's tank. They believed there was still plenty of oxygen left that could help them breathe better. However, Michael's injuries made it hard for him to move freely, which made the plan more challenging. Afterwards, Zoe met with Marina and shared her plan to retrieve the oxygen. But before they could discuss further, David, who had been eavesdropping, chimed in. He offered his assistance, explaining that his oxygen-producing plants had died, and there wouldn't be enough oxygen for everyone if they didn't act. Pooling their resources, Zoe, Michael, Marina, and David worked together to devise a plan. There, Marina provided guidance to Zoe on how to extract the liquid oxygen carefully, ensuring no leaks occurred during the process. She emphasized that only two oxygen cylinders were necessary for their journey to Mars, ensuring their safety. Once they finished getting ready, David and Zoe left the plane and walked along a pole that connected the station to the tank on the launch rocket. They moved slowly to get used to the spinning station and feel a bit of gravity. But halfway there, they started to lose gravity so they had to be careful not to touch any panels, or the station could lose power. When they reached the rocket, Zoe followed Marina's instructions 
and checked how much liquid oxygen was left in the tank. Surprisingly, there was still a lot, enough for all four of them. There, Marina told Zoe to focus on the mission, and David gave her an empty oxygen cylinder to fill. While filling the second cylinder, an alarm went off on the plane, warning them about an incoming solar storm. Then, Marin told Zoe and David to come back before the storm hit, but Zoe hesitated because they needed two oxygen cylinders. However, Marine insisted because the storm could be dangerous due to radiation. Feeling like she had no other option, Zoe decided to leave the second oxygen cylinder behind and head back to the ship with David, only carrying one. But on their way, the space station suddenly spun, causing Zoe to lose her balance and dropped the oxygen cylinder into space accidentally. David reminded her to hurry into the ship before the solar storm hit. They realized losing the oxygen cylinder made the situation even worse. David mentioned they still had one cylinder left, but it was only enough for three people, and they could only retrieve it after the solar storm passed. But Marina explained the storm could last for hours, and by then, the oxygen in the tank would likely run out because of the hole Zoe had made earlier. Their only hope was to retrieve the lost cylinder quickly, but that seemed impossible during the solar storm. Suddenly, Michael offered to go, but Marina rejected the idea because he was still injured and inexperienced in space. Plus, if Michael didn't make it back, they would all suffocate due to lack of oxygen. Amidst all the confusion, Zoe made a bold decision to retrieve the oxygen cylinder, despite David's objections. She was determined, partly because she wanted David to reunite with his wife. On the other hand, Marina, though wanting to help, was hindered by her injury. Zoe felt guilty about losing the oxygen cylinder earlier and begged Marina for the chance to make things right. Marina, tearfully, reluctantly agreed, knowing the risks involved with the solar storm. After donning her astronaut suit, Zoe bid farewell and rushed out of the plane to retrieve the cylinder. She managed to get it back to the station, but the solar radiation damaged her suit and caused blisters on her skin. Despite the danger, she secured the cylinder in the ship and sat down, facing the increasing radiation exposure. In the final scene, Zoe reminisces about her journey with Marina and David from their first days at Hyperion. Initially joining to fill her free time, Zoe found herself accepted into Marina's team for the Mars mission. Grateful for the opportunity, she made sacrifices for the team's success, culminating in her brave act during the solar storm. The film ends. The moral lesson from this film is when you lost in space, remember dropping the oxygen cylinder is like dropping the last slice of pizza at a party. Everyone's gonna be gasping for air and wishing they had grabbed it sooner.